Hello and welcome to Business Insider's session on global crises through entrepreneurial eyes, striking a deal during COVID-19. And today we're joined by Martin Bostovsky. Martin is a Argentine Spanish serial entrepreneur who is the founder of seven companies. In 1984, while still in college, Bostovsky started his first business, Urban Capital Corporation, one of the early leaders in the loft movement in downtown Manhattan. This was soon followed in 1986 by Media Corp Services, a pioneer in AIDS and PSA testing. In 1998, he started Jazztel, Spain's second largest publicly traded telecom operator. In 1999, he founded Yard.com, Spain's third largest internet website DSL provider. Uh, Martin Bosovsky's current venture is Fon, which with over 13 million hotspots is the largest Wi-Fi network in the world. In 2014, he joined the super supervisory board of Axel Springer. So thank you so much for being here, Martin. We're really excited to hear your insights today. Well, very happy to be here. And I don't mean to start by correcting you, but you must have picked up my bio from something of 10 years ago. My, my, I have left Vaughn many years ago. I sold my shares. And in the last few years, I built Inception Prelude, which is the largest chain of fertility clinics in the US. We built and sold the Olia for 1.3 billion, which is uh, the fifth largest uh, wind and solar operator in Spain. I started Overture, which is a, a robotization of the embryology lab company. I started Gogo Network, which is a, will operate fleets of autonomous vehicles. And I also uh, raised $200 million for different VC funds. But I'm glad that you uh, alerted the audience of my biography before 2010. <laughs> As a serial entrepreneur, there's certainly a lot of ground to cover. So thank you so much for getting us up to speed on your most recent ventures. Uh, and I guess that leads us into 2020 has certainly been an interesting year and it's not over yet. What do you see as some of the key challenges and opportunities that the industry and various sectors have right now? Well, I think the, the general headline is that if you're not in technology, 2020 has been an absolute disaster. But if you are in technology, it's been a windfall. And it's, uh, it's almost unfair. And I think the media picked up on that. And the media started saying that people in technology are enjoying the biggest gains of their lives while everyone else is suffering. And it sounds like the world is an unfair place, which it may be but I would like to explain why this is going on. So the reason why people in technology have had the best year of their lives in 2020 is because COVID made it such that anything that could be digital is now digital. Like if you had a choice to shop in person or shop in Amazon, now you don't have a choice and you shop on Amazon. Or if you had a choice of going to the movies or staying at home, now you don't have a choice, you stay at home and you watch Netflix or HBO or whatever, and I could go on and on and on. I think uh, COVID has made digital anything that could be digital, has brought us maybe 10 years of digital development in half a year. And that's why people in technology are doing so well, while people in traditional services are doing so poorly. The other thing that, that is particularly uh, meaningful is that uh, in the field of health tech, there's been a radical advance in the last uh, six months because the pandemic caught everyone uh, by, uh, surprise, by surprise and the and methods the we had to fight the pandemic initially were methods of the Middle Ages, which is to lock up people and wear masks. They knew that in the 1500s. So then we got caught up in these we used to feel so strong of our, ourselves, so successful. And then we end up fighting the pandemic like in the 1700s. And so a lot of money went very quickly into health tech. And now we see a radical transformation of the health tech sector. The other thing that 
has changed a lot is um, the sort of the feeling of cities. Like people used to believe that cities were the center of life and that everything that was going to happen was going to happen in cities. And all of a sudden this pandemic came and everything that is nice to do in a city, clubbing, going to museums, theaters, concerts, everything that makes it worthwhile, hanging out with a lot of friends, being very easy to have a business meeting across town, the cities lost their value. It became very unattractive to be in a city because you would have very little to do because COVID is basically a fun killer. Like anything that's funny social and anything that's social gives you COVID. And so people fled the cities and that also was a big trend of 2020. Do you see, so obviously you have a huge amount of insight into fertility and that as a growing sector, what opportunities do you see coming up? Well, it's kind of funny, right? Because a lot of people said, well, now that everybody's locked up at home, they're going to have sex and make babies, right? And we will see if that's the case. At Prelude, we cannot monitor people having sex at home, but we can certainly monitor people who come to our clinics to do IVF. And we can also monitor people who come to our clinics to do egg freezing. And our clinics are in 35 cities in the US. And it was paradoxical because at the beginning of the pandemic, it was a disaster. In fact, we thought our company was going to go bankrupt, like nobody was coming to our clinics and we couldn't even legally keep them open. But then that ended, fortunately, relatively quickly. And we found the opposite situation, that one of the biggest thing that was deterring women from doing egg freezing and IVF was having to skip work, having to leave work for the five sessions that it takes to do egg freezing or IVF. And now they work from home. Nobody sees when they skip. I mean, they, they go, they're, they're on their iPhones or Androids anyway. And we've seen the opposite. Now we've had the best month we've ever had. And that is because sort of a work-life balance that the pandemic has given through the work from home in terms of accessing medical treatments or fertility treatments. So the answer is at first it was terrible, but now it's pretty good. Fantastic. And more broadly across health tech, are you seeing any other uh, areas where you believe there'll be accelerated growth and, and room to really sort of almost uh, leverage and, and use this as an opportunity? Yes. Uh, it was interesting when you read my bio, you mentioned some, an effort I did in the 80s called Medicore, which is a company that built monoclonal antibody tests uh, against HIV AIDS or to detect HIV AIDS. And we also work on a treatment for HIV AIDS that was called convalescent plasma, which is exactly the same treatment that is being used now for COVID. And so Monoclonal antibodies were discovered by an Argentine who won the Nobel Prize, Dr. Milstein, while working at Cambridge. And they basically consist in using cancer uh, in a positive way. That is, you get cancer cells that give you eternal life and you make them to make antibodies against SARS-CoV-2. And the antibody treatment that Trump got, uh, which I don't understand why it's not being approved for everybody over 70, because it should, in the sense that it, it's a treatment that, I mean, the mortality is so high for people over 70 that we should lower the threshold to approve these treatments. So there's been a huge investment in monoclonal antibodies, anything related to monoclonal antibodies, um, including diagnostics, therapeutics. There's been enormous investing in vaccines. I mean, we will... We will have vaccine technology evolve tremendously, not only for uh, SARS-CoV-2, but for, for, for everything else. There's been incredible investment in general in telemedicine. Uh, a, lot, <clears throat> a lot of doctors have had to see their patients for, who were afraid to leave their homes or were not allowed to leave their homes. Um, there's, been a, there's been a transformation of the health tech sector. I'm glad, I'm proud to be part of it. 
I'm as a, as an entrepreneur and as an investor, I'm investing in more companies in the sector. Very interesting. And so having covered so many different sectors from health tech and volatility to energy and transport, what 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 can you tell us about 2021 and beyond? What are you looking at next? Is there any new sectors or will you be going deeper into uh, your current portfolio and your current commitments? Well, my prediction in terms of the economy in general, before I talk about my own portfolio, is that 2021 will be the turnaround year. I think by next summer in the Northern Hemisphere, we will have... Um, three lines of attacks on the virus that will, a combination of which will succeed. One line of attack will be rapid testing. The second line of attack would be monoclonal antibodies early. The third line of attack will be vaccines. And I think with those three, we will defeat COVID. Uh, that means, that doesn't mean there'll be no COVID, there's still AIDS, but that we will learn to live with it in a way that doesn't endanger our daily life. So I think that's, I also think Biden is going to win, which I think it's pretty good for uh, the economy and just human decency in general. Um, I, think, I think Trump has been, uh, has added a lot of uncertainty to the economy. His behavior is difficult for uh, people to, to live with in terms of what to do with COVID, his management of the pandemic, of his own illness uh, has created a lot of confusion. And there's a lot of confusion that contributes to the increase of the pandemic. So I think the fact that I am pretty confident he won't be president anymore. So I think 2021 will give us a USA with a, that has conquered or regained democracy, has, has a conquered COVID, I think America is getting its act together vis-a-vis -vis COVID. And I think Europe will is also working on a number of developments to fight COVID. I think both Europe and the USA have a very difficult time behaving like Chinese or Koreans. And I think one of the reasons the Asians have done so well with the pandemic is because they naturally go towards a behavior that controls the pandemic, but people in the West find confining or kind of against the way we believe life should be. Uh, for example, wearing masks inside homes is something that could totally prevent the spread of the pandemic. I believe that by now, most of the contagious is not on the streets, it's at home. But it's very hard to get a European to wear masks at home when they have visitors, family members, dear friends, um, we kind of like, you know, it's, it's sort of that moment where you take off your mask and most of the contagiousness happens at home. So I think, um, I think the Asian behavior, we have a hard time mimicking, but I think the Western creativity in medicine will save us. And, and so the Western behavior kills us, but the Western creativity saves us. Uh, so I'm optimistic about the Western world in 2021. Now, concretely about lines of investing, I'm not a stock investor. I'm a private investor, and I invest in my own companies or companies of others when they get started. And I think that companies that accelerate the, train, the trend towards digitalization will continue to do incredibly well. That makes sense. And actually, I think that's all we have time for, Martin. But uh, thank you so much for all your insights and for being so candid and uh, and giving us some good points to, to look toward. And that will be it. Thank you so much for joining us today. No, thank you for being here.